a new protocol which has been going around the world for some time. It's called the Stop Agonist Antagonist Protocol, and I'll explain how it works. So, you know, let's try and uh, do it on my iPad. So. So when you have a look at how this protocol will uh, work, and this was published uh, quite recently. And so what does it tell us? It tells us that there is a protocol with an agonist given in the mid-luteal phase, wait till your menstrual period starts, confirm down regulation by estrogen, then commence recombinant FSH and maybe add HMG, Add the antagonist when the follicle size reach, reaches 14 millimeter. Trigger HCG, or if you want, with a GRH analog. So let's have a look at how this protocol would work. So if you have a look at it, so you're going to start the agonist around day 21. So you're starting it here, around day 21 and wait till the periods come. When the periods come, you stop the antagonist, get the estrogen levels tested, then start the stimulation of the ovaries, then add the antagonist somewhere here. So what have you done? You've given the analog to downregulate, you have given stimulation, stop the analog, and started the antagonist when follicle size reaches 14 millimeter. So what is the rationale? The rationale is first, you're using the agonist because it gives you a better synchrony. LH suppression tends to occur, and that is continued with a lower chance of LH surge. Add to it the antagonist, and you continue the LH suppression, and by combining a recombinant FSH with HMG, you recruit more follicles. So let's have a look at the results. The first group, patients with a poor ovarian reserve up to three oocytes with 300 of FSH. 30 patients were seen and they found a higher number of follicles, more than 13 millimeter on day of trigger. A clinical pregnancy rate, again, remember, these are women with a poor reserve of 16.6%. Let's look at group two, those women in which there was elevated progesterone. Again, there are studies which say that if your progesterone level crosses four nanomole, then the chances of pregnancy in a fresh cycle may be reduced. And these were 11 patients with a failed previous cycle and a high progesterone. In the STOP protocol, a lower peak progesterone higher number of follicles, more oocytes, more mature oocytes, better quality of top quality embryos, and a clinical pregnancy rate of 18.2%. Again, these are patients with poor ovarian reserve. Let's go back, look at group three. And group three was patients with repeated IVF failures and poor embryo quality, 23 patients. And this STOP protocol, yielded more top quality embryos, a higher proportion of M2 sites, and clinical pregnancy rates, which were around 30.4, which is quite good. The worries are that in high responders, if you decide to use the STOP protocol for the GNRH analog trigger, you'll see a suboptimal response. And that happened in about 18% of cases. And that's quite a high proportion. So. Be cautious if you're going to use this in high responders to see whether you can get a better response. There's been a proof of concept study done in 2016. And what it told us is using the STOP protocol and using letrozole priming, again, remember, this is slightly different. They found a higher number of follicles, higher number of oocytes, and a non-significant clinical pregnancy rate. Now, 
what they found out was that letrozole priming increases intraovarian androgens, and we know that. It may cause additional follicular wave and increase FSH expression on follicles and recruit more follicles which are FSH sensitive. So what did they do? They did the analog from day 21 or so for seven to 10 days, await a period, letrozole, I would think about five milligram for five to seven days, and then start the stimulation. So what are you using? You're using letrozole as a priming. Now, what do we know from this protocol? Remember, the research is limited. So rather than jumping and saying this is a new protocol, research is limited. It is a valuable addition, mainly in Poseidon 4, low responders, poor reserve, those with a high progesterone, poor embryo quality, repeated IVF failures. That's where you can start trying this. In my practice, I would tend to add a dual trigger. And that's what we would think of. So in summary, I would say a slightly newer protocol has a role. And again, difficult to say in which cases, but in cases of poor reserve, previous failure, poor embryo quality, I think it's worth giving it a try. Thank you very much.